Hey photographers, if you're going to shoot some video with the Sony a7R Mark III and don't have time to fiddle around, here's a quick start guide for video novices. Now, I'll keep this as simple as I can and then let you in on a few advanced tips at the end. Now, I'm getting ready to shoot a video at the YouTube space in Toronto. Use an SDXC memory card rated U3 or better. The A7R supports UHS-2, and that's what I'm using, but only in slot 1. UHS-2 is actually overkill for the video bitrate supported by the Mark III. I'm using a U3 or V30 type card in slot 2. After making sure the cards are backed up, I reformat to make sure the cards are clean and ready to go. Now there has been a firmware upgrade since the camera was released. Make sure you're running the latest firmware. Video can be recorded from any mode, but use video mode on the dial. It provides more control and sets the display to the 16x9 video aspect ratio. Make sure the EV dial is at zero. On tab 5 screen 6, use recording mode to select the card slot you'd like to use to record. The last option, sort, records video on the not prioritized slot and photos on the other. To simultaneously record video to both slots, use Simult with the film icon. On screen 2, set the auto power off temperature to high. This extends the amount of time you'll be able to record if the overheating alert appears on screen. And as long as we're here, turn touch operation on. It only works for focus, but that's perfect for video. If you are using a full frame or Sony FE lens, on tab 1 screen 1, set APS Super 35mm to manual and manual to off. With a crop lens, leave it on auto. On tab 2 screen 1, set exposure mode to manual. File format. To capture these screens I have to be in HD, I'll switch to 4K when I start recording. Now I recommend 4K even if your final output is HD because it's higher quality and it gives you some opportunity to crop and zoom while editing. In HD, for most video production, 30 or 60 frames, 50 megabits. In 4K, 30p100. On tab 1 screen 9, auto ISO allowing the camera to set the overall exposure level. I'm bounding it between 100 and 6400. Also on screen 9, metering. Now for most situations multi, but for performers on stage use highlight, which will usually keep the faces in the spotlight from being overexposed. Screen 6 to turn face priority on. The second option sets whether a white box appears when a face is detected. And saints be praised! Face detection now works in 4K. If you're shooting in the sun, use tab 5 screen 1 to set the monitor brightness to sunny weather. That makes the screen easier to see. And unless you're shooting with a tripod, use the viewfinder. It will make your shots steadier. And speaking of tripods, tab 2 screen 4. Turn steady shot off if you're shooting with one. With the 24 to 105 f4 lens, use the switch on the lens. Tab 2, screen 2, audio recording should be on, and if you're using the internal mics to record, check that the level is 26, the default. Use reset if you need. With default, you don't need to see the meters on screen, but I leave them on anyway. And on screen 3, I like to use the shutter button for video recording instead of the red record button. That feature is activated here. Press DISP to get to the display you like. This can be customized on tab 2 screen 6 and is independent for the monitor and finder. My options are all, histogram, and level, and mostly I use the histogram page. Using the back dial, set the shutter to 1 60th. In dark situations, 1 30th might be better. With the front dial, set the aperture to f4. With the 24 to 105, that's the maximum aperture on this lens. Sony has some lenses, like the Cinema 28 to 135, where the aperture is set manually on the lens. F4 will soften the background. Now, if you want softer, zoom in and back the camera up if you need, but keep the subject as close to the camera as possible. If you're shooting outside and those settings are too bright, the camera will warn you by flashing ISO Auto. 
Turn the front dial until it stops, and if that doesn't work, you may need an ND filter. The scene is properly exposed, but if it looks too bright or dark on the screen, turn the EV dial to override with EV adjustments, and alternately press the right side of the control dial and set the ISO manually. Using the touchscreen to set the focus is easy. Or press Fun and select the focus area, flexible spot. I find M works best for most situations, but small and large are available, and then use the joystick to select the focus point. I shoot with a set white balance. This prevents color shifts that make editing difficult. Press Fun and select the setting that looks most appropriate, or dial it in using Kelvin. If it's yellow, turn it down, blue, turn it up. Finally, set the creative style. And these are all personal taste, so choose the one that pleases you. And those settings will provide the maximum return for minimal effort. Press the shutter, or the red button if you didn't customize, and record. The A7R 3 limits recordings to 29 minutes and 50 seconds, so keep your eye on the bottom left. If you need more and are running low, pick an appropriate point in the performance to do a quick stop and start. Now, if you can spare a few more minutes, I'll provide some advanced tips. Here's what I do beyond what I just described. I use a custom white balance, tab 1, screen 12, set, and then point at a pro 18% gray card. Press the center button to capture and again to save. My preferred creative style is neutral, and I turn down each of the custom settings. These are my personal preferences to reduce the crispy, oversaturated look typical to video. When the lens doesn't zoom far enough, use Tab 2 Screen 5 to turn on Clear Image Zoom. Then use the Zoom setting to zoom in and out, although this stepped control likely isn't suitable for use while recording. And on Tab 2 Screen 8, it's easier to assign the zoom to a custom key for quick access. Note that the custom buttons can have different roles for stills and video. This means that the left side of the control wheel, the drive mode selector in stills, can toggle manual and continuous focus in video mode. And while I'm here, I set C1 to focus magnifier. That's useful if you're using manual focus. Now press C2 and the zoom control appears. And face detection doesn't work when clear image zoom is engaged. For better audio quality, use an external mic or mixer and connect it to the mic in jack. If you do, you'll need to turn the audio levels down, 10 or less. You can eyeball exposure or use Zebra for a more accurate setting. On Tab 2 Screen 6, set Zebra to 100, and this alerts me to any area in the image that's overexposed. If you use Zebra, assign it to a custom button. I'm using C3, and pressing will toggle it on and off. Using Auto ISO gives you one less thing to worry about. And the reason not to use Auto ISO is that as it's continually making adjustments, the resulting footage may be distracting and harder to edit. Set the ISO manually by turning it up or down until the zebra stripes are eliminated or minimized. Judgment call. Tab 2, screen 3 to set the on-screen marker settings. 80% safety zone helps to remind you to keep your primary subject within this area. Then turn the marker on or off. If you use this, that's also a good custom button selection. For black and white footage, use the Creative Style menu. The A7R 3s battery lasts over two hours, but the camera can also be powered using USB as long as the battery has a charge. And it takes quite a bit to overheat the Mark III, but I have no magic to prevent that from happening. And if you're going to do this regularly, use Tab 6 to create a My Menu with your video settings, like I did. I hope this helps. I hope your shoot goes well. If you have more questions or suggestions, use the comments field below. I do read and reply to all relevant and civil comments and questions. And keep shooting until your battery is empty and your memory card is full.